Opinions expressed on this radio program do not necessarily reflect the views of this radio station. Todd. Todd Levitt. Todd Levitt. Todd and Craig, good to hear you guys. Todd Levitt. This is Attorney Todd L. Levitt. Honestly, you could not be any more spot on. Now, from the Black Diamond Group mothership in the studios of 98.5 UPS, the Todd L. Levitt Law Show. Welcome to the Todd L. Levitt Law Show. Good morning, good evening, and good night. I'm yours truly, Attorney Todd L. Levitt, broadcasting and podcasting in the Black Diamond Group mothership in the middle of the mitten in a beautiful green nutrient field with my good friend, Craig Russell, the muscle, the hustle. He is truly, folks, take my word for it, the dankiest, dank, dank, dank human I know. Lori, here it comes, the gassiest human. The water is wet, the sky is blue. Don't call him Mando, but Craig Russell, we love you. How you doing, Craig? Todd, I am fan flipping tastic. How are you? You know, I could not be better because I'm sitting across the studio from one of my favorite humans on planet Earth, third rock from the sun. When that show was out on TV years ago, yeah. I had no idea why it was called third rock from the sun until about three years ago. Really? No idea. Really? Well, how could, well, I mean, I just, I, I didn't pay attention in class when, in fact, I don't even think I took a class on all that stuff. Well, there was a, there was a song by Joe Diffie called third rock from the sun, which is right. Earth, And that's right. the show was based loosely based on the title of that song, even though they didn't use that song as the, uh, the theme song for the show. But did you know? Would you like a did you know about that show? Sure. The people who uh, created uh, that 70s show also created Third Rock from the Sun. Yeah, some useless information here on That's a beautiful, here beautiful afternoon, evening, or morning. Wherever you're listening to the show, we opened up with truly one of my favorite groups from the 80s, albeit the uh, drummer and lead singer departed on his own, Phil Collins. Uh, that song, Mama, what a great song, Craig. Ma- reminds me of Spring Break 1985, Daytona Beach, listening to Eddie Money uh, on the beach with uh, my SIGAP buddies. So that was, that was a great time. Eddie Money was a great guy. And you know, uh, do you know who the lead singer of Genesis before uh, Phil Collins was? I do. Who was it? 
It was, uh, hold on, I, it's, on the, it's on the tip of my tongue. What does that mean, the tip of your tongue? Uh, Craig Ru- it was Craig Russell, wasn't it? No, it was not Craig Russell. Who was it? Peter Gabriel. I, I knew that. I, okay, I'm not just saying this. You know how people, oh, I knew that. I really, truly knew that. Yeah, I figured you would. That no, I, really, I just couldn't. No, I, I couldn't, that'd be something you couldn't put it together. Couldn't put yeah. it together. Yeah. But that brings us to an interesting story of, of that you and I are just stoked and toked and just so happy about even though we're a law show craig and what sure. would that be it kind of well, fits into everything here it's it's about this uh this thing scientists have found recently recently this radio burst that was eight billion years away and it finally the radio the little audio of this has reached the earth yeah how does that happen i don't understand eight billion year old radio signal one where is a radio signal coming from from 8 billion years ago. And you're correct. The story is that astronomers have detected a mysterious blast of radio waves that have taken 8 billion years to reach Earth. It's about dang time, Craig. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, we've been waiting and waiting. We've been waiting, waiting, waiting. Forever. Ever. <laughs> uh, do you, it's a, it's a, we're not making this up, folks. It's a true story. Oh, well, the, the part about us waiting for it is totally made up. But the, the story itself is true. Yes, you're right. And they don't know that they call it fast radio burst or FRBs. They're millisecond long burst of radio waves with unknown origins. And they were first discovered what in 2007. Hey, look, I, I, I don't, I do believe that there's got to be something out there. I don't know. I just do. What about you? Well, I'm not a big believer in the whole, you know, Oh, there's UFOs. They're coming down to Earth and all that kind of stuff. But I, yeah, it would be hard to hard pressed to really think that we're the only species that is this technologically advanced that's ever existed. The Earth universe is, you know, endless and endless. And obviously, well, then how can you not? How could you not believe in UFOs? And then again, how do you know that there's something out there that we can't see just because we don't see it? Does it mean it does not exist? There's no, a lot of I, things that are floating around the atmosphere from molecules to insects yep. to microscopic living creatures. So who's to say that there's not things that are just landing I, through the atmosphere? What I'm saying is it's not that I don't believe that there aren't things out there. I just think our stylized version of what a UFO and um, aliens and all that stuff, I think is a little hokey. You know, men in green suits that have three eyes or whatever. You know, it looks like E.T. I just I think it's it's probably not that, you know, but yes, what do you I mean, E.T.? Wait, E.T. is real. <laughs> and Craig. So, and so is Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny. too. You know, were you the kind of young guy that, you know, were the first one in your neighborhood to tell the other kids that Santa wasn't real? Are you that guy, Craig? I just want kind to know. Of. I was I was the guy who told everybody that the the uh, uh, tooth fairy wasn't real. But one of my uh, kids many decades ago. Uh, did uh, say something about the Easter Bunny not being real to one of her friends. I think they oh. were like nine years old. Uh-oh. Yeah, that, that was a conversation with the, the, her parents. I felt so <laughs> bad. But uh, we are a law show. I am attorney Todd L. Levitt, and we do have some law to get to. And you are Craig Russell, the muscle, the hustle, little John's best friend. Hey! So here's another story. We, we're just full of stories today, Craig. Story, lots of storytelling. I had no idea about this one. I, I no clue. You and I love the outdoors, as does all the listeners out there on planet Earth. Do we yes. agree? Yes. Big outdoors. Have you ever heard of the single tree known as Pando? I have not until you sent me this story. I had not heard of it. Right. Okay, folks, this is this is a true story. Also, we're not making this one up, but uh, there is a forest. There is a forest and there's one tree that has 47,000 stems, all with the same DNA sprouting from a shared root system over 100 acres of Utah. It's in Utah and it's uh, it's it's an aspen tree and it's it's just massive. 12,000 years of life on earth and this is a massive plant and it's just 80 feet in the air that's massive massive and on top of it it makes like weird sounds doesn't it yeah there's something that it it, it's like a they record something from the tree i mean other than the leaves and the branches right uh, going back and forth but can you imagine i actually looked it up on youtube 
It's it's amazing, folks. So look it up, Pando, 47,000 stems. All the trees in the forest, Craig, are connected by one tree. That's amazing. And it's this tree. This and pando. it's one tree. Yeah, it's a Pando tree. Yeah. So there you go. You know, I, I've got something similar. Did you, that's kind of like, did you know? Did you know? I've got something similar like that. So uh, when we moved into our what, house. What, a dandelion? Is no, it a no, dandelion no. story? No, no. When I moved into the house that we're living in now, back in the early part of this year, um, every once in a while, I'd be out in the kitchen, and I'd swear I'd hear like an animal outside, like crying or whining or whatever. And I'd look, you know, I'd hear the, like, it sounded like a cat or something, maybe scratching at the door or something. So when I'd hear it, I'd look out the window and I wouldn't see anything. And it was driving me crazy. Come to find out, our refrigerator makes these noises. And it sounds like, the refrigerator is making the, it sounds like there's somebody living in our refrigerator. Every time you open the refrigerator, it's crazy. Yeah, no, there are a lot of, bizarre sounds and noises that if if it's not something that you're used to especially in a house uh, uh, houses yeah. move you know that oh, right yeah yeah they settle they and everything. buckle the, the the weather yeah they settle um the pipes there are some really bizarre noises in houses that's for sure not to mention animals outside lurking around mice other rodents that may be living within the walls of the home it, it could yeah. it could definitely freak you out make you you know, grab for uh, something, to, you know, under the Second Amendment to protect yourself there if you don't know what it you know is. What? When, when and I we was, love the Second Amendment. I'm just saying. When I was living in Houghton Lake, we lived in a house there right by the lake and uh, it had uh, there were uh, chipmunks in the walls. And a couple of times the chipmunks got out into the house and were running around, knocking stuff over and things. And it's just it was ugh, it was the worst. Did chipmunks not get the cutest DNA on planet Earth? Well, they do until they're like eating your food and causing trouble in your house. Put look, well, Craig, what do you, what do, you do in allowing chipmunks in your house in the first? It wasn't when I was. I didn't allow them in. They they got in. They burrowed their way in. They were in the living in the walls and they got their way in through a hole. And next thing, I got know, a question for you. What's that? Uh, do you like Dunkin' Donuts coffee? Uh, I'm not a coffee drinker, so no, I don't. You don't? I like okay. Dunkin', I like Dunkin' Donuts, but I don't like yeah. Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Yeah, Dunkin' Donuts has been around a long time. Tim sure. Hortons from Can. I love Dunkin' Donuts, by the way. Yeah. But oh, but Dunkin' Donuts just settled a case for three million dollars on a, so, on a lawsuit involving hot coffee. Is this another one of those hot coffee things? God. Yeah, I saw that came across my wire, my noggin. It's like, oh come on, I love Dunkin' Donuts. But uh, an unnamed woman claimed that the incident, which happened back in 2021 in Atlanta, Atlanta area, Dunkin' Donuts, the cup's lid was not secured, and a franchisee was sued more than likely with the corporate corporate corporation she had two hundred thousand dollars in medical bills and she won three million dollars in court and then we just talked about mcdonald's a couple weeks yeah. ago yeah you'd think these places would learn don't mess around with the hot coffee or make people serve, serve them themselves their own coffee then that way you're not liable for it would that would that be true if you were if you went to a a, a chain restaurant and they said you can't get coffee through the drive through you can only come inside and pour it yourself would that take away some of the liability possibly huh well but anybody could sue somebody for anybody could sue anybody for that's anything that's true that's it doesn't true. mean it's going to you know go through the court process the opposing side will file a motion for summary disposition to have the case dismissed and there could be fines and fees attributed sure. to the losing side attorney fees and other fees so yeah it, it, you know albeit you know anybody can sue anybody there are some issues there that you don't you know Isn't it, you know a lawyer should not just bring frivolous lawsuits agreed and wouldn't it be better for a company but they to do there's always those? a lawyer out there that will oh sure but wouldn't it be better for a company just to settle those kind of deals instead of going through the whole process you know not necessarily i'm not a civil attorney i'm a criminal defense license restoration lawyer I just do not. I'm not at liberty to advise the general public whether or not somebody should settle or take it to trial. Okay. Often you want to appear as if you're going to trial to get a better settlement from sure. the insurance company. Sure. But then again, you got to think about all of the bad publicity these corporations and backlash they could face. A $3 million settlement, which is a massive amount of money to most of us 
to a corporation that can end up losing a hundred million from bad drop. publicity. Yeah, it's a drop in the bucket. Three yeah, million, so I, I'm sure they took that into consideration. And here we are talking about it. But I love Dunkin' Donuts. Are you kidding me? Um, Mount Pleasant has a Dunkin' Donuts now. Do they? We do, and two Tim Hortons. Did you know uh, Tim Hortons is from Canada? I did. Tim Hortons used to be a hockey player. Yeah, is that yeah. true? That is true. Used is, to be doesn't hockey. everyone in Canada play hockey? Yes, yes they do. Okay. If they don't play it, they like it. It's their national sport. Yeah, actually, hey, we open crosses, but anyway, it really is. I mean, Steve Eiserman. I mean, yeah. I love Steve Eiserman. Wayne Gretzky. The Red Wings are doing good this year so far. Yeah, they are. All right, Craig. I think we have to go to break. We do have to take a break, but when we come back, more law and the legal mind of Todd L. Levitt coming up. Welcome back to the Todd L. Levitt Law Show, turning it and burning it, toking it and smoking it, smoking it, smoking what? Smoking it with my good friend, Craig Russell, the muscle, the hustle. Craig, I'm just getting off the past hour and a half of consuming an entire box of peanut butter crunch. You and I talked about that a couple weeks ago. It stuck with me. I bought a box of Captain Crunch, peanut butter, Captain Crunch. Ugh. I ate the whole thing this morning. I'm, I'm True story. Only like only like regular Captain Crunch. Don't like the oops berries or any of that other crap. Captain Crunch for sure. Yeah, Captain Crunch. Hey, I've got an update uh, for you and for the listeners. If you remember a couple weeks ago, I asked you about an email I got from Mando. I do. I've discovered what Mando is. What right. is that? Have is it a fruit in a, no, on an island somewhere in the middle of the Caribbean? It is not. Like a mango, man, mando? Nope. It's a nope. mango family? No, nope, it's not. So have you okay. ever seen... You ever seen these commercials on TV with this lady who's like looking right into the camera? It's really close, like she's doing like a TikTok video or something, and she's talking about that Lumi deodorant. It's like lotion. You can put it all over yourself, blah, 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 72 hours. She's really annoying. Well, she's the lady who created this this lotion uh, stuff. Lumi is for women. Mando is the deodorant lotion for men. So now she does commercials for Mando. And I'm like, hey, that's the Mando stuff that I got an email about. So it's deodorant lotion for men. And Okay. Very yeah, interesting. So fa- again, another mean. fact. I'm full of it, man. Not I'm as interesting. Full of something. No, that, no something. It's, it's, that's a great update, but not as interesting as the uh, 8 billion year old radio signal finally no, reaching that's true. Earth. Or yeah. the 14 billion year old tree. 
You're just full oh, of that's really old stuff. No, four, 14,000 year old. Oh, 14,000 year old. Well, yeah. what was your question? You said during break, I got a question. Oh, yeah, that. I was going to ask you. So we were talking about civil lawsuits with like McDonald's and Dunkin' Donuts. What's the uh, what's the largest civil suit that's ever been? OK, again, I, I'm not a civil attorney, but just from memory, I'm thinking at least in the top five, the 1998 tobacco settlement. Do you recall oh, back yeah. in the day yeah. that huge settlement against tobacco companies? Wasn't it like over a billion dollars? I was, I, again, I don't know. I'd have to look it up, but it, was, it had to be more than that. Massive. 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 But, uh, you know, you become part of a class. Uh, have you ever received in the mail uh, any type of notification yep. from a law firm out of state that you are part of a class? A class, class lawsuit? Action, class action yeah. lawsuit, yep. Class action sure lawsuit. Have. I've actually... Yeah participated in a couple of those and actually gotten one time I got a check for like $580 for one of those. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, something else that is interesting and most people don't know this. You always hear the term. I was not read my Miranda rights, right? You've heard that, correct? Yes, many times. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have a right to an attorney. You, you ever, you ever, you've heard of this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Miranda was an individual. Okay. That was, that's a a from, case, it was a case in 1966, right? Miranda v. Arizona. Yeah. And Miranda was actually arrested at his home and taken into custody to a police station. That's the case. Okay. And he was identified by a complaining witness at the station. He was then interrogated by two police officers, Craig, for two hours, which then resulted in a signed written confession. Oh, you, you, did you know the case? I, I don't know the case. I just know it was a, he was in, it was named after a person. Yeah, and, it, there's uh, an actual. Most of these cases are, um, but in, in this case, again, everybody. I get this all the time. Todd, I was not read my Miranda rights. I was not read my Miranda rights. Well, there's no automatic uh, reading of the Miranda rights. Miranda triggers after a certain time period or a certain circumstances. But at trial, the oral and written confessions were presented to the jury. And Miranda was found guilty, Craig, was sentenced to 20 to 30 years imprisonment for what he was accused of. Now, on appeal, the Supreme Court of Arizona held that Miranda's constitutional rights were not violated in obtaining the confession. So Miranda arrested at his home, taken into custody, interrogated by police for two hours. Now, again, Miranda rights refer to this case. It went all the way up to the United States Supreme Court, Craig. Right. And what do you think the United States Supreme Court ruled? Well, they ruled in his favor. They that's correct. That, that he was not that's, given his rights. And that's where the whole started the whole process of Miranda. Right. But before we get to the holding, let's talk about the issues. Whether the statements obtained from Miranda uh, was subjected to custodial police interrogation. And, and, and should those statements be admissible against him in a criminal trial? So that, that's that's the, the key set of words right there, custodial police interrogation. Are you in custody? Are you free to leave? And I would argue, as a defense attorney of 30 years, that when an officer pulls somebody over, albeit even for a civil infraction or a, approaches you on the street, do you think you're just able to, to take off and run at that point? I mean, you you probably shouldn't, but you could. What do you think would happen if you did? Um, well, then you let's, let's go. Let's go with the motor vehicle first. You probably An officer would be, pull, pulls you over. Okay. Sir, yeah. officer, let me let me set up the facts. Okay. Officer pulls you over for a, a civil infraction, blinker, traffic stop. You cross the center line. You're on the side of the road. Officer approaches your window. You roll it down. Give your identification. The officer goes back to his or her vehicle to run your identification to make sure there's no outstanding warrants. You have a valid license and other safety concerns. Sure. Do you think you're free to just take off and go? Well, you wouldn't. You'd lose your license and your registration. He's got that. So, you well, really let me ask you this. Let's say you were pulled over and it was a misdemeanor. You didn't have a license. Your, uh, your license is denied and revoked. And the officer approaches the window and says, Mr. Russell, do you know why I pulled you over? And the first thing you say is, oh, of course, officer, I'm driving with a revoked suspended license. Now, you made the officer asked you a question. OK, you got the. You, you yeah. follow me? Yeah. It was, this is just an invest. You could argue the officer is going to argue it's an investigation. I have a right to ask a question. Sure. You answer 
Well, and you just confess, which you don't have to. You have a right to remain silent yep. other than give your information. Yeah, I have a suspended license. The officer goes back, and then you decide to take off in the vehicle. You're out of there. What do you think? I mean, the question is, were you free to leave at that moment when the officer took your license, or were you in custody? Um, well, you're not in custody at that point, but it would probably okay. be bad to leave at that point because then you're kind of – wouldn't that be like eluding? Well, if you're not in custody, back- if you're not in custody, why are you not? Look, because I'm not recommending. I interrupt you. I'm not recommending anybody do this. Do not just take off. Yeah. From an officer when you're when an officer pulls you over for for every reason. There's a hundred of them. But if you're not in custody, why are you not free to leave? Because Therefore, my point is, when you made the statement, when the officer first questioned you and said, "Mr. Russell, do you know I pulled you over?" And you just answered, yeah, I'm revoked, which is an admission of guilt. Yeah. Okay. At that point, and, it, it's... So does, you, that, does, does that admission get suppressed? Uh, no, I wouldn't think so. Because that part, it's part of an active investigation. He pulled you over. You've, you've already now confessed to some kind of a crime. Driving without but, a license. So my argument is you are not free to leave. If you took off, you'd be charged with a couple felonies of uh, fleeing and eluding in a motor vehicle. Right. Therefore, right. why is that statement not... Covered under Miranda. You see, th- th- this is my argument as a defense attorney that Miranda should be automatic, and it used to be, I believe, back in the day. Miranda should be automatic. As soon as an officer approaches the vehicle, irregardless, and, uh, you know, you should but, be told, listen, Mr. Russell, you know, you, know you, have a, you have a right to remain silent. But here's the, here's the part of it. If the officer came up and said, do you know why I pulled you over? And instead of me confessing to having a uh, suspended and revoked license, I said, no, officer, I have no idea why you pulled me over. Then, Well, you have a right to say that. Yeah, you do. And if he said, well, can I have your license and your registration? He goes back. Then if I take off, he probably is going to figure out I know something's up because he's going to find out soon enough my license has been suspended and revoked, even if I give him a, a, a bad license. When you was well, an attorney, when you file a motion to suppress statements under, you know, Miranda, you are arguing that at the time the individual, your client made that statement, they were never read the Miranda rights. And yes, they were in custodial custody and not free to leave. If an officer requested somebody step out of the vehicle and go have a seat over there, I would argue that you're in custody. You're not free to leave. You were you were yep. removed from your vehicle. You went. You were placed on the curb, and if the officer is investigating and asking you questions, I would argue that those, you know, that your Miranda should have triggered. But the Supreme Court held that there can be no doubt, Craig, that the Fifth Amendment privilege is available outside of criminal court proceedings, and it serves to protect persons in all settings in which their freedom of action is curtailed in any significant way from being compelled to incriminate themselves so in other that's words, that's it that's what the ruling was if i am if if i'm understanding what you're saying if i get pulled over i get taken out of the car and sat on the curb even if the officer asks me a bunch of questions i can just say i'm going to plead the fifth amendment at this point i'm not going to say anything you could take you, the you fifth know, yeah you could until, take the fifth and not say a thing yeah and until you are given your rights and even then you wouldn't want to say anything. But you let's say you start you chirping like a bird. Chirp, 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 chirp. Yeah, well, and you don't, you know, which most people do. Yep. And then the officer puts that into a police report. Prosecutor uses it against you. You were never told you had a right to remain silent. And by custodial interrogation, I mean questioning initiated by law enforcement folks after a person has been taken into custody or otherwise deprived of his freedom of action in any significant way. Again, Craig, hear what the ruling is by the United States Supreme Court. Custodian, a custodial, it's that Captain Crunch, peanut butter crunch. Yeah. Custodial interrogation means questioning initiated by law enforcement officers after a person has been taken into custody or otherwise deprived of his or her freedom in any significant way. So the issue is when you're arguing this in front of a trial judge, and you file a motion to suppress a statement. You want to, because if your client is pulled from a vehicle and incriminates him or herself, they were never read their Miranda rights. But based on those statements, charges are filed, warrants are issued, they're placed under arrest, they're bonding out. You have to take a look, folks, and see whether or not your your client, their their freedom, their actions were deprived and they were actually in custodial custody. Custody does not necessarily mean handcuffed. 
Custody does not necessarily mean in the back of a police car. Custody can mean, Mr. Russell, please step from your vehicle, go have a seat on the curb. Do not move. Yeah, don't go. Do not move. <clears throat> don't go. Anywhere. If somebody tells me do not move, I am not moving. I'm in custody. Yep. I'm not moving. Now, custody, somebody could argue, you know, in the courts, the case law, well, was the individual placed under arrest? You know, no, no, you don't necessarily have to be placed under arrest uh, to be deprived of your freedom of action in any, in any significant way at a stop. Now, look, we love law enforcement. <laughs> Big shout out to all the troopers, oh, yeah. the sheriffs, tribal, Thank Thank city job. cops, Central Michigan University. I have so many dear friends of mine who are court officers, retired. I have so much respect for law enforcement. I mean, I do my job. It's like that cartoon. You know, what was a Ralph and what's his name? Ralph and they Sam. Go, the Ralph and Sam. The go, dog. Yep. Yeah, they go to work. They go at it all day. And at the end of the day, what are you going to do tonight? Oh, I'm taking a wife out. Let's go together. So yeah. there you go. But my, ma- massive shout out to law enforcement. Of course, we love our veterans. Big shout out to all the vets out there. Nothing but love and respect for you and your families. Hey, we got to take a break. When we come back, we'll talk a little more about this because I've got a, a little interesting, one of those useless trivia things about uh, Miranda and how the first time I ever realized what it was all about. But we'll take a break on the Todd Elliott Law Show. More law coming up. Welcome back to the Todd L. Levitt Law Show. Turning it and burning it with yeah. Phil and Mike and Tony, Genesis and Mama. Not Mama, I'm coming home, but just Mama from Genesis. Uh, Great you know, song. And you know, happy birthday to yeah. one of my kids, Sarah. Oh, happy birthday, Sarah. Happy birthday, Sarah. 23 years old today. Wow. So she's, she's amazing. Crazy. Amazing. Yeah. Crazy, crazy. Yep. Hey, so you were talking about the Miranda rights. That's thing. it? That's 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 the end of your birthday wish? That's it? Um, well, I've you know what? You know how many times I've met Sarah? How many? None. <laughs> okay. I've never met her. I didn't even know you had a daughter named Sarah to be There you honest. go. There's a lot of things about me you don't know, that's Craig. Right. That's right. Now, Rachel, I've met and talked to many times. We've done the show together before, but didn't know you had a daughter named Sarah. Didn't know that. Yeah. So see. And on Father's Day, I've never received uh, Father's Day cards from anyone other than the, the, the children who I know to be my children. I just want to state that for the record. <laughs> so the ones you're, you're suspecting are yours? You didn't forget anything from? Exactly. You know, that's that? what people do. They get those DNA tests uh, just uh-huh. to see if there's any anything out there that they don't know about, you know? Yeah. 
wonderful, beautiful Todd, children. Todd, you've got seven all kids children you don't know beautiful. about. You didn't know about. Listen, all know? kids are beautiful, yes. so are yes. wonderful. But big shout out to Sarah for that. Yeah, and by the way, Craig. Yes. By the way, uh, yes. we, we are talking about Miranda, and you do have a question. But as we said in the last segment, Miranda – you know, was an actual individual, is an individual. Yeah. It was uh, in the state of Arizona. And the question is, when when are you, when are you not free to leave? When are you in custody? That's the big question. Well, wouldn't you argue that if a police officer told me to step out of the car and sit down, and if I decided to invoke my Fifth Amendment rights and not answer any questions other than my name and, and in for basic information, wouldn't you already agree you could pretty much assume you should have your Miranda rights have kicked in at this point because you're not going to say anything. And more than likely, unless they strip the car clean and don't find a thing and don't think any, and you know, and it was all a big misunderstanding or whatever, that you're going to be probably arrested at some point. You're going to get your Miranda rights written, written to you. If you were a, the person sitting on the side of the road, I would say, all I can really answer is my name and here's my address and my phone number or whatever the information I really can't admit to talk about. You, you don't have to say a thing. You don't have other than provide your information to law enforcement. Right. Now, look, I, I, I've done thousands and thousands, and I still do, drinking and driving cases. Sure. Aside from all the driver's license restoration, the sobriety court licensing that I handle is, is drinking and driving. I get this question all the time. Todd, I was placed under arrest. It was my first time being arrested. I was never read my rights. Again, if you, if you take, let's, let's take a student, for instance, or you, Craig, you get okay. pulled over. You're, you know, you're arrested after an investigation, maybe a preliminary breath test, sobriety test. Officer has observations. We've gone through all this before. We're not going to repeat ourselves in prior shows. Right. But you're placed under arrest, you're handcuffed, or they just put you in the back of the police car. And you're driven down to either the hospital for a blood draw, your blood serum, which is a more exact measurement of your blood alcohol, or you're taken down to the sheriff's department or law enforcement agency for a data master test. Now, again, you're, you're never read your Miranda rights. And do you know why you have not been read your Miranda rights at this point? We're talking about you, Craig, because, who you are today. Because I haven't been arrested yet. No, you're under arrest. Okay. Yeah, and you have not been read your Miranda rights. Do you know why the officer made a decision not to read you your rights? Uh, I don't. That, that sounds weird. Why, why because typically an officer, based on his or her experience and training, when they pull somebody over like you, you know, there's no, they pull you over. Here's your vehicle. They look inside the vehicle. There's no paraphernalia. There's no criminality, nothing suspicious. They run your record. They speak to you for a few minutes. They determine that you're just a, a hardworking father of two or three kids. And there's nothing else going on here other than a, a drinking and driving case. So they don't really have to read your Miranda rights because they don't have any inclination that there's other criminal activity afoot now let's say for instance you as you are placed in the back of a cop car on the way to the police station or wherever they're taking you you say by the way officer i have all these stolen goods in a locker <laughs> now at that point the officer is shocked and says wow and based on that statement they pass it on to the prosecutor's office or a magistrate you know, the prosecutor issues more charges, felony charges for receiving and concealing stolen property. Now, that statement will be suppressed because you were never told you have a right to remain silent. Right. You see, but more, more, more often than not, the officers know that there's nothing else going on there. And Let's, so uh, <laughs> that's why you're never read your rights. Let's go back to this part where I, ta I say, by the way, officer, I have a bunch of stolen goods in a locker. Is this the point where the two police officers look at each other and go, oh, my God, what an idiot. What are you doing, dude? Why are you saying exactly. that? What would exactly. You do that? Why would you do that? Now, let's, you review, let's review what your rights are. Super drunk. Okay. You have, right. Craig Russell, you have the right to remain silent that yeah. anything you say can be used against you in a court of law. That's right. That you have the right to the presence of an attorney. Yep. Mike Nichols or Todd L. Levin or Trey yep. Ears or That's Mike Juarez. Big shot to my buddy my, Mark you would Juarez. Be my, you would be my one call. Would be to, uh, to Todd now, Levin. don't even call me because I'm not oh. helping. And then if he cannot <laughs> afford an attorney, you, You're one will be appointed me. for wait you minute, prior to any minute, questioning. Wait, 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 wait. You wouldn't help me if I got pulled over for what you do. This is your career. Not on the radio, not going up north. Not yeah, you know, you know why up. I'm not helping you, Craig? Why? 
Because one, you should know better. Well, yeah, but you wouldn't you wouldn't be my lawyer. I would I help you. Of I course you. I would. would. Of even if course you're just I would. For, even if you just fake saying it for the radio, I hope you would at least fake say it for the radio. Come on. Come of on. course I would. Come on, Craig. Come on, Todd. Come on, Craig. But, you know, I do avoid representing certain friends and family. Sure. No, it makes sense. You'll never, you never get, you never get, a, you never get to rest. Yep. They have access to you and, you know, especially family, yep. friends of family. And, and, you know, it's hard to, and you have to tell them, look, I, I'm not helping you. Yeah. No, I'm just not helping you. It's not happening. I would hope you'd help me, but I understand why. You would I'd help, help you. you can, but I have filed motions to suppress and have been successful to suppress statements that were not covered under Miranda. You want to know? So you want to know some interesting propaganda from the police? Uh, and why? I, why would you say it like that? Can't you just say, "How about no"? No, go ahead, Craig. Because this is so. You, when that that whole Miranda case went through in the mid '60s, 1966, correct? Is when it was. I don't finally. know the year, but okay. <clears throat> yeah. So there used to be. A I could TV look it show. up. There used to be a TV show on called Dragnet. You remember? Dragnet? I remember. I remember it. And this was the color version in the late 1960s with Jack Webb and Harry Morgan. OK, not the black and white version from the early 50s. And one of the hallmarks of that early 19 or that late 1960s dragnet was they would read people their Miranda rights because it was brand new. And that was one of the things the L.A. Police Department was a big contributor and a big um, they were the consultants for the TV show that got Jack Webb a lot of access to the police center in Los Angeles and a lot of uh, police officers and, and stories. And one of the things they said is, look, we need a good public relations um, thing with this Miranda rights. So anytime you and the show have a chance to read some of the Miranda rights, that reiterates that the police are trying to do their best to follow the law. And that's why they did it. And you see them read it again and again. They take a little card out of their, their jacket and they read it time and time and time again to people who are getting arrested. And that's the first time I ever realized what Miranda rights were all about was when I watched it on on Dragnet. But that's so that's why they did that. You know, looking at it from a law enforcement point of view, if you're a brand new officer on the road and you're you're faced with, you know, your first, second, third, fourth, fifth stop, you, you know, you have to question, you know, where where does custodial custody, where does it start? Right. At what point? When I stopped Craig Russell or whomever, does this and, and, and it's in your state of mind, Craig, and it's not I would argue and I believe the courts agree with me. It's the state of mind of the individual who is being detained, whether or not they feel that their actions have been stymied, whether they feel that they are not free to leave. And I would argue, again, as a defense attorney, there's no way in heck, folks, you are free to leave when an officer approaches you for any kind of basic Stop. Civil infraction. You're at a tailgate. Any reason whatsoever. There's no if you take off, you're going to be charged with yep. all kinds of things. Fleeing, yeah. eluding, resisting, well, obstructing. Yeah. You know, resisting, obstructing, assaulting in, in the state of Michigan. There's a felony charge for resisting, obstructing uh, an officer's command when he or she identifies him or herself as an officer. They don't have to be in uniform, but I say I'm an officer, Officer Craig Russell. I'd like to ask you some questions. <laughs> wow. now, you, now, most people, you don't have to say anything. You could just give your identification and that's it. But on these basic drinking and driving cases, there's no wiggle room. The United States Supreme Court has destroyed our constitutional rights when it comes to motor vehicle, meaning if you operate a motor vehicle on a public roadway or a parking lot accessible to a public roadway, and in most states with a blood alcohol around a .08 or higher, you're going to be arrested and charged with you know one or two or three different drinking and driving uh, statutes depending on which state you live in there's not a lot of wiggle room so people say well i you know the officer didn't tell me why i was pulled over and almost every police report i have read and i read craig there's always two or three reasons why an officer pulls somebody over and even if an officer and here's where the courts destroy your rights even if an officer is under the mistaken belief as to why he or she pulled you over but upon doing so they observe criminality in, in front of them, meaning you seem really intoxicated. Your speech is slurred. Your eyes are glossy. You know, you're flapping your information all over smell, the vehicle. Smell of alcohol. Smell, smell of alcohol. That give, The courts give the officer leeway 
because it's in the public's best interest to investigate that person. So again, even if the officer of the probable cause wasn't as strong as you would think it would be, but there, at every police report, there's two or three reasons why an officer stops somebody for drinking and driving. That is, you know, you, you took a, okay. Some of the weakest arguments in police reports, I know we have to go to break Craig, right? Yeah. But you. okay. You want me to get this out or leave it? When yeah, come get, back? No, get out. Go ahead. Go ahead. Often. And this is a legitimate reason for someone to get pulled over is their license one of their license plate lights are out so on your vehicle yeah. on your vehicle i'm talking about the back of it in the state of michigan you're only required to have a plate in the back of the vehicle not the front is what it had to be in the 70s if if one or two of those lights is out on the side an officer pulls people over for that that's one of the weakest reasons the other one you took too wide of a turn you're in the left turn lane or right turn lane and you go too wide yeah that's another reason they pull you over or your cracked windshield or something dangling uh, you know, I look, I always tell people don't, you know, shout it loud and proud and to all the officers out there. Hey, pull me over. You know, I mean, yep. make sure your vehicle, your brake lights, your registration, don't give an officer a reason to pull you over. But if they do pull you over, you know, keep your hands on the wheel. Uh, don't, uh, you know, the officer wants to go home to his or her family, keep yep. everybody safe, cooperate. You can still, you know, remain silent, give your information, but let that officer know. And in Michigan and other states, if you're a CPL holder, you have a you have you have to inform that officer right away that you oh, are yeah. a CPL holder. Yep. OK, but anyhow, they're doing your job. But you also have a right to exercise your constitutional rights. You have a right to remain silent. And by damn, you can use it. And you also have a right to an attorney. And if one can't be provided for you, can't provide one. One could be provided for you at no cost. Yeah, and we'll refer you to attorney Mike Nichols because I only do certain type of cases. <laughs> I, if you call my office for this, that, or the other thing, the odds are I'm going to refer it out to some of the other fine attorneys throughout uh, Central and Northern Michigan. Correct? Unless you're getting pulled over like for Bill uh, Conklin. Drinking, unless you're getting pulled over for drinking and driving, then Todd yeah. Lutz taking the case. Hey, we got to go to break here on the Todd yes. Law Show. Show about next week. Iceman cometh coming up. Big shout out. Woohoo! Welcome back to the Todd Elevit Law Show. Craig Russell, the muscle, the hustle. You have a right to remain silent, but we're doing a show together. And if you remain silent, I'm I'm out of here. So you better keep talking, my man. Craig Russell, R two four zero one two five. No, I'm just giving my information, man. You know, name, nah. name, rank, and serial number. That's all I'm giving. Right. I I, I would advise everyone out there. 
read your constitutional rights, read the Bill of Rights. Know, know what your rights are. Mm-hmm. Become educated, become informed. It will empower you. Yep, I totally agree. And always be the best version of who you can be each and every day. I get to meet so many great men and women who, you know, they, they made a poor choice as I did when I was younger. I'm, I'm defective. I'm human. I always tell my clients, look, I don't judge anybody. I'm defective. I made so many poor choices when I was younger. I think we can all say that, right, Craig? We can. And I think that's one of the reasons why you like helping people is because you know that you made a bunch of poor choices and you were able to turn your life around and look where you are now. I mean, a lot of things I did, I never got caught for. I'm not saying I hurt, I never hurt anybody. Um, yeah. I mean, did I get behind the wheel when I was younger after consuming alcohol? I did. Um, thankful. I'm thankful. I never hurt or killed anybody, including myself. Like I said, I'm, I'm human. I'm not going to sit here and pretend I'm someone I'm not that I'm better than anybody else because I'm not. No. We're all, we're all human. And we're and not perfect. Nobody's we're not perfect. perfect. Not but Craig, um, great show. We got a lot of special guests coming up. Yes, little John, hey! you are coming every day, every Sunday after the show. I get a text from we love little John. <laughs> Let's have little John on in the next two to three weeks. We should we should do that, little John. Hundred hey! percent. We've got Bill Conklin coming back on. He did such a great job. Attorney Mike Nichols, Judge Danny Baines coming on the show. Good Trey Danny Ears, yep. Trey Ears. We got a lot of judges. Maybe Judge uh, Sarah Spencer Naga will come on his show. Oh, well, that's a good one. Or Judge Jack Levick. I love Judge Jack Levick from Acosta County, Reed City, Osceola. Great judge. Maybe Judge Mary Beebe up in Ross Common, Judge Farrell. And don't forget the one and only uh, Denise Policella. She'll be back on, too. Denise will be. we got so many great guests, folks. And we got attorneys from out of state coming on. But next, a week from yesterday, is the Iceman Cometh. That's right. And Craig, I have an injury. Uh-oh. Are you going to have a race this year? Man, I hope so. I was in God's country, and I was doing some filming because, you know, I, I film nature videos, believe it right. or not. Yep. And I knew I should not have stepped where I stepped, and my leg got my left leg got twisted, and I had oh. to fall down so I didn't oh. break it. Oh. But I strained the tendon behind my knee. Oh, wow. And I got to shred the NAR next week, like 30-plus miles from Kaska all the way to Traverse City, Timber Ridge. Timber Ridge. Big yep. shout-out to Gordo, Gordon. And Ella and everybody at Timber Ridge who runs Timber Ridge, Gordy owns it. But uh, so yeah, I'll be I'll still be doing the Iceman with my buddy Chucky Martinez, Jeremy Shave Schaefer coming up from Ohio, and five thousand other racers. Jordan Wakeley will be there. I don't know what the weather's like in where everyone's at, but in uh, the Upper Midwest, Michigan, Minnesota, Wisconsin, those kind of places, the weather has taken a turn for the colder. Well, that's why they call it the Iceman. But my my money again is on. One of my favorite Michigan athletes, Jordan Wakeley, Grayland, Michigan's very own Todd. Much love and respect out to the Wakeley family, Todd. Much love. And uh, Jordan is just a great racer. Not only a great uh, mountain bike racer, but also a great uh, canoe paddleist as well. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Craig, um, yeah. big shout out to uh, once again all our sponsors. Um, let's talk about them. Clear vision, window, and siding. Yeah, they, they are the best. Chad Mellywell Drilling. Just love them. Love everything that they do. Rusty Gold Antiques in Everett. We love Rusty Gold Antiques. Be sure to stop off in Everett and let them know. You heard it right here on the Title Levitt Law Show. Big shout out to uh, everybody in Everett at Rusty Gold's. And Clark Clark Modular Homes. Love them as well. And if you are interested in being a sponsor of the Todd L. Levitt Law Show featuring Craig Russell, the Muscle Hustle, call 985-UPS, ask for Corrine, and uh, you can sponsor the show and other Black Diamond Group stations. Black Diamond Group stations are fantastic. Rock 105, 95.5, The Bear. Uh, so many great stations as part of the Black Diamond Group, Craig. Yeah, 95 CFX there in Mount Pleasant. And oh, yeah. 97.7 out of uh, uh, Midland as well. And 95 UPS, of course. And the Twister. And uh, Love everything they do. Say hi to uh, Mike and Norm and everybody uh, up, up there at Black Diamond. And happy birthday, Sarah. That's right. I did, did, well, how do I not know you had a daughter named Sarah? How is that possible? Craig, how did you not know you had a right to remain silent? Anything you say it can and will be used against you on this show. You mean, I, why did I tell the officers I've got stolen goods in a locker when I was <laughs> right. in the car? What was I thinking? Oh, God. So I had a case in Livonia in the 90s. Literally, my client was pulled over for drinking and driving, and he was so intoxicated Unfortunately, he was involved in some other activities, and he did say something to that effect, but he was never read his rights. So as a young attorney in the, in the mid-late 90s, 
I was able to file a motion to suppress and got it thrown out the extra charges. So that's where I got that from. That's good. That's, yeah. That's a good sign for that. But Craig, guess Todd? what, Craig? Show's over, Todd. We got to go. <laughs> Craig, I love Genesis, a.k.a. Phil Collins. Let's all be the best versions of who we can be. We're not here for a long time, Craig. What are we here for? We're here for a good time, Todd. Say hello to all the mothers out there. Take us out, Genesis, with Mama. The Todd L. Levitt Law Show, brought to you by Clark Modular Homes of Mount Pleasant, Rusty Gold Antiques in Everett, Chad Malley Well Drilling of Rosebush, Clear Vision Windows, Siding and Roofing of Midland, and Attorney Todd L. Levitt. Opinions expressed on this radio program do not necessarily reflect the views of this radio station.